the next topic that I'm going to teach, actually, in next class, is about something called multiplic multiplicative with updates. And that's like a, one of the things that I really want to teach. But um, there was deadline. Um, I didn't prepare uh, like in time. So I will now instead teach you something about like uh, one of my work that is related to stuff in class. And um, um, it's teachable. And so yeah, you will see about it. Okay, so so let, this talk is going to be about like um, k connectivity, okay. and um, we said that the graph is k connected. If you cannot delete less than k nodes, and the graph is uh, and the graph is disconnected. Like that is for every set S of size less than K, when you delete it, um, then the graph remain connected, remain like has only one component. For example, um, so this graph uh, is too connected, right? Because if you delete only one node, everything stay connected. But it's not three connected because of this because of this set. And um, so what is one connected? One connected is just the same thing as saying that the graph is connected. Right? One connected is just you don't delete anything and you check if the graph is connected or not. So now the natural question is just you want to know that, OK, you have a graph. Is the graph is is the graph k connected or not? Okay, so if, if k is one, then uh, you know how, how to do it in how to check this in linear time. How huh? like just just do breakfast search or anything to check that. Um, how about two? When k is two, um, do you think one can do it too in linear time? So that's less clear, but like uh, it turns out that like people know like uh, like um, long time ago, fifty years ago, Bob Tajan showed that uh, you can actually get check if the graph is k connected, is two connected in linear time, and even when it's like three connected, you can check it in linear time as well. Okay. So. Um, so that's the, um, with this de de develop, de development, um, so like uh, Hopcroft just a year after that, just conjecture that maybe you can do it for, for any k in linear time. So that's the, that's what happened. And it turns out that even when k is 4, then it's not clear anymore. At that time, um, people don't know how to do it in, in faster than linear time. Um, it's like n square, which if the graph is fast, then that is quadratic time. So that's like it turns out to be hard question. By the way, um, when you talk about similar problem, which is k edge connectivity, where you ask, you have a graph. Uh, and you ask, can you delete k edges from the graph so that the graph is disconnected? This is this is settled. Like uh, people know how to do it in linear time already. But if you ask about vertex connectivity, then then uh, then it's not clear. Okay. So so now. Suppose that I want to solve this problem even when k is big. Okay. So for those of you that come late, um, the problem is you have a graph. Like you have a graph 
you want to check if the graph is k-connected or not. And by k-connected, I mean that um, you cannot delete less than k nodes so that the graph is like disconnected. So if you have this, this if this is a problem, you should want to check if the graph is k-connected or not. Do you see at least how to solve this problem, maybe using MacFlow for any, like, yeah. How, how would you solve this problem using MacFlow? Well, if a graph is k-connected, then there'd have to be at least, like, k paths, like, k disjoint paths. Um, from S to T, I think. Mm -hmm. and so, so if you just put like a capacity of one on each edge, then if the max flow is at least K, then you know it's K connected. So actually like, I mean, good. So it's something like that, you, you have a, you go into the correct direction. So actually when, when the graph is K connected, you actually know that if you if you take any pair S and T, right, and if you ask how many nodes can I delete so that I can disconnect S and T, the the separation, the separator, the set of, that separate S and T need to be at least K. Right. And this is true for every pair. If the graph is not k-connected, you also know that there must be some pair S and T, like there must be some cut of size less than k, and that will separate some, some S and T from each other. So what you can do is you can just maybe check for every pair S T and check if um, Check if there is a vertex cut of size less than k. That's separate s and t. And we learn in class, if you remember, mm -hmm. that to check if you can delete given s and t, if you want to check if there is like a less than k node that you can delete to disconnect it, you can solve that using MacFlow. Right? Like, uh, so, so you can just choose, um, you can choose every pair of nodes S and T and run MacFlow between, between it. Where like the graph that you run MacFlow need to be like the, the one that you kind of do some splitting, if you remember. Um, okay, I will go to this soon, but my point is that you can do it in, in this time, um, N square time MacFlow. In MacFlow here, you just need to check if the value of MacFlow is at least k or not. Um, so that you can do it using Ford Focus in time mk. Um, maybe I, I want you to, to really understand this. Um, so if you remember in class, right? Um, if the problem is that you have S, you have S and you have T, and you want to check if there is like a cut, a vertex cut of size less than K or not, right? This is graph G. Then do you remember like we reduce the problem to, to some graph G prime, where like for every node U, you just kind of split it into you in and you out, create this edge. Like this is a transformation. Um, and if this is like a, if this is a, a B, and X, uh, Y, you just like create like a A in to you, A out to you in, uh, B out to you, you in, and the out, the out guy just go to, I don't know, just go to the in, 
go to the in node of the neighbor. So that's the that's a reduction if you remember. And uh, then just look at this G prime, right? And you, what you do is you compute max flow between S out and T in, right? When you compute max flow in this graph, you will get some edge cut, directed edge cut. So that, let's say that this is a directed mean cut, the mean cut in this G prime, right? And um, the cut will already correspond to some edge that looks like u in and u out. Because what you do is that you, you put capacity here to be one and everything else is infinite. So the cut looks like this. And for each edge cut that looks like u in u out, it just corresponds to cutting a node in original graph. I just refresh uh, your memory on how to find how to find vertex mean cut that disconnect S and T using max flow. Okay. <coughs> so like the edge cut of size whatever of size uh, ten will correspond to vertex cut of size ten here. It's just really the direct correspondence between the two. So I hope you now convince that now, all we need to do is just to check for every ST pairs and run max flow between them. Check if the value of max flow in G prime here is at least K or not. Make sense? So that's one algorithm to, to check K connectivity for any K. Okay. So, um, Turns out that like you can reduce the number of max flow calls um, to something like n, and um, that is not too hard. Maybe it might be into exercise or something, but um, but now it's randomized. Um, and um, now that like this is just, I'm just telling you the story. Um, it turns out that. So people try hard to, to solve this problem fast. There are like more ideas um, <coughs> using matrix multiplication. Omega here is a, a time to multiply matrix. Like n to the omega is something like 2.37 something. And this work is quite cool. Like um, they actually interpret connective vertex connectivity in a physical way. Like um, model it as like some rub rubber band networks, and then solve some physics equation, and uh, then you get the, you get the result. The Amos idea, like uh, you can actually assume that the graph is sparse, like uh, the number of edges is at always at most n n k. There are fast algorithm that takes m n. Um, use some max flow variant of max flow called push the level. The Amor algorithm, this work uses something called Ramanujan expander graph. I have mentioned this word sometime in the past, but it's a cool thing. But my point is that there are many ideas like that try, people try to attack this thing. But if you look at this crazy history and let's simplify it a bit, when the edges, like let's say the graph is sparse, right? Um, the number of edges is linear in n. Then, like the running time now simplifies, but basically everything just remain like everything is just n square. At least since like ninety six, uh, sixty nine. And uh, what I want to tell you today is that um, I chose some years ago how to beat this thing. And then uh, actually, a bit after that, uh, make it to linear. And the real, the real running time is something like k square m. Okay. <coughs> and 
and it's randomized. So, so when you come back to this small case, like uh, when k is small, it means what? It means that basically for any k which is constant, doesn't need to be a super small constant anymore. For any constant k, you basically get something like linear time. And actually the algorithm works in directed graph too, but let's ignore that. It's just more, it even works in the more general case. So this algorithm really like um, kind of um, basically proved the conjecture when k is small. And uh, it breaks the long time barrier since like uh, 50 years ago. And you will see that um, actually it's so simple. It's, um, that's, I can just teach it in, in one, one hour. And the message maybe is that um, if I can just tell people in the past, it's just try to solve this problem, but think locally and use randomization. Because you will see that everything could have been found. This algorithm could have been found a long time ago. They just didn't think it this way. Okay. So, so let's see how to solve this thing. Okay. okay. So let's start with like a more formal definition. So in like from now when I say vertex cut, uh, I will talk about this LSR here. <coughs> Like it's just a tuple, LSR. I call it vertex cut if they separate partition the, the graph into three parts. And, um, and like there is no edges between L and R. There's no edge between L and R. In other words, if you, if you delete S, then the graph like, is disconnected. And uh, I also will use this notation, neighbor of L. Neighbor of L is just every node that is incident to, to L. Like that, that, that every node outside L that have some edge into L. Okay. So then in here, like neighbor of, a, of L is just S. Neighbor of R, neighbor set of R is S2. And the size of this cut is just the size of S. Like, it's just the size when of this cut because when you can delete S, S nodes to disconnect the graph. This is another, another example of vertex cut. It can be like this. <coughs> and another notation, I will use kappa kappa st to denote the size of the mean cut between, like the size of the mean cut that separate s from t. That is, is a mean cut l s r such that s is in l and t is in r. Can we, can we compute this thing? Can we compute kappa of st, how, how can we compute it? Max flow. Yeah, exactly. just max flow is just the thing. It's just like asking what's the what is mean cut between s and t. So just run max flow. And in particular, if we just want to check if uh, kappa of st is at least k or not, we just run, can run, let's say, Ford focus and k rounds, right? Um, and that takes nk time. So it's just a simple algorithm to check if kappa, like just run for focus on in t prime in, the, in that graph. Okay. And so just to put everyone on the same page, g is k connected if and only if kappa of st is at least k for every pair, for every pair st. So that's the, that's just the basic definition now. And let's go to the, the algorithm. 
the framework is actually quite simple. Um, so suppose, like, our plan is this. Suppose that the graph is not k-connected. Okay. It means that the x is a vertex cut LSR like this when s is smaller than k. So the, if, k, if the graph is not k-connected, there exists a sum cut. And what I'm going to assume from now is like when, when I talk about LSR cut, I will just assume that L is on the smaller side. So what I mean is that the volume of L is less than the volume of R when the volume is just the sum of the degree on, on, on every, of every node inside it. So the volume of L is just the sum of the degree in uh, nodes in L. Okay. I just assume with our loss of generality that one side is smaller. Uh, so L is smaller, a smaller volume. And the goal is this. Suppose G is not k-connected. The goal would be, I need to find some, like some cut, maybe some other cut, different cut, L prime, S prime, R prime, such that the size is less than K2. I want, I need to find this with high probability. So if the graph is not K-connected, I find some cut that of size less than K, that certify that the graph indeed is not K-connected. And uh, if I cannot find any cut, then I can just now declare that the graph is actually k-connected. So that's the goal. All right. And now there is one easy case. There is a first case that is when the cut is balanced. That is, you think like both L and R actually are quite big, both of them. A thing of like maybe they they have like basically half half volume of the cut both of them, or actually, so what I mean is like the total volume of the whole graph is just sum of the degree of everything, which is two m. Right. I I I'm gonna say that in the balance case, it's just a case when the volume of L, which is on the smaller side, is at least k m o k. So it both contains like a m of m of one over k fraction of edges. Okay. So let's see what is the intuition why um, this is an easy case. So suppose actually that both L and R actually have half and half size. Okay. Actually, sorry, maybe I start with this. Suppose someone actually give you one node A and B, okay. where A and B actually are in on the different side, L and R. Someone just tell you, just give you this with a promise that A and B uh, are on the diff different side of a cut. Can you find uh, a cut of size less than k using this information of a and b? Flow and to get the nodes in the cut, just look at all the u in, u out edges in S that were set to one in your max flow. Yeah. So. So okay, good. Something like that. Um, so let's say that I let's say I run max flow from A to B. Right. I know for sure that. The value of max flow it must be less than k. Just because there is a, a cut small small cut in in between them. 
So if I just run maxflow from A to B, I will, like, the mean cut that this algorithm return will be some cut of size less than k. It might be this cut exactly, or it might be some other cut, but this guy must be less than k too, because it's a mean cut. So if you, if you get A and B, you know that you will get mean cut of size less than k. So you just, you, now you can, you get like a cut and you can return that. Make sense? Okay. So you see it now. If someone gives you two nodes that are all, that with a promise that they are on the different side, then you're done. And now suppose that now we, we assume that the, let's say that the graph is so balanced, like the, 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 these two cut are like this cut are really just balanced, half and half. Is there an easy way to get A and B on the different side? You can just keep picking random. Um, the edges are balanced because of the edges, so you can keep picking random edges, and then you can choose points like that relate to those edges. Yeah, yeah. Just, Let's say they are like half and half on both nodes and edges. So yeah, then you can just pick random points and yeah. just in like log n tries you'll get like very high probability. Yeah. Good, good. So the idea is that L and R are both big. You don't know where it is, but you know that they are big. How to get to it in an easy way? Just random, just sample, right? So if you sample a pair of nodes with half probability, one, one node is going to be here, another node is going to be here with half probability too. So this is just constant probability. You will get into both, both sides. OK, it's just constant probability, but you can boost this. right? If you sample lock in guys, one of them, one of the pairs, will be on the different side. And once you get just one pair on the different side, you are done. So that's why the intuition why balance case is easy. So, so now, in the with this parameter, right? Volume is m o k. Then you would just instead sample k pairs, k log n, something like that, k pairs of edges. And I sample edges because. Now I talk about volume instead of number of nodes. So it's, it's more like a number of edges. Yeah. Yeah. So if I can sample k pairs of edges, k log n pair of edges, I will, I will use O tilde to high log n in this, in this talk. Then with high probability, some pair, E and F, will be on the different side. Okay. So let's, let's calculate it, right? Um, just to be sure, like um, the probability that um, like X is in L, X is just like one, one endpoint of an edge. This is going to be at least something like 1 over k, and because the total volume of L is, is m over k, the total volume of the graph is m. So and the probability that y, y is in R, this is going to be at least constant, because this thing, like, this thing has volume at least 1 over k, and this thing has volume at least basically m is m over k. So like, yeah, constant fraction of the graph is a, is, a, is a bigger side. So the probability that, so these two events, both of them happen with probability bigger 1 over k. 
So the probability that you fail by by failing, I mean like they are not on the different side, fail for uh, k log n times is just something like 1 minus 1 lower k, right, to the k log n. And let's say that just multiply this by 100. And that is just like a really small probability. Something like n to the 10. Make sense? Like, you sample a, like a k log n pairs, one of the pair will be on the different side with high probability. Question. Okay. So now, um, so what would be the the algorithm? Can can anyone suggest the algorithm to solve it? In this case, just sample each pair and run max flow between the, the endpoint. Okay. So I'm just gonna sample. Just sample an edge and check if the endpoint of both edge has mean cut less than k. And if so, if it has been cut less than k, then you return the cut. You know that you must obtain some cut of size less than k once for sure, like almost with high probability. So what's the running time in this case? Well, it's just. Um, you sample k times, k log n times, and each time you run Ford Ferguson. So that's mk square. Okay. So that case is easy. So you can, now we, we get fast algorithm, but um, but it might not be balanced, right? The hard case is this case. When let's say L now is like a tiny. How do we do this? So let's say that the volume of the L side is tiny, and let's say it's like can be written as two to the i for some i. Can be like a constant, even. Now, my plan is this. I still want to sample. Let's say I sample. Um, m over 2 to the i edges. Now with the same, the same kind of analysis, right? Some of them will, will, will hit L with high probability that must exist one sample edge such that the endpoint is inside L. So let's say I, like one of the guy is inside. Do you see this calculation? Should I? I mean, the probability that you use sample and edge and one endpoint is inside L is just, yeah. The probability that the sample is in, inside L, this is just something like, uh, what? Um, 2 to the i over m. Right. This is the volume of L, this is the volume of, of, of everything. Okay. So, so if you fail, um, the probability that you fail, mm. fail for like uh, M to the I log N times, this is just 1 over 2 to the I M log in. That's like, if you multiply it by 100, this is again like n to the 100, something like that. Make 
make sense? Just simple calculation. Okay. Why is it like, why do we like, uh, why does it sound like good at all? Because, okay. Because I want to do something magical. Uh, so what I want to hope to do is this. What I hope to do is that given, uh, given some node x, right, and suppose that x is inside L, I want to be able to find this separator s near the seed node. And I want to do it in time, even like proportion to, to, to the i. So I, can, I don't want to even spend linear time, for example. I want to spend just time, something like 2 to the i, so that this thing times the number of sample cancel and you get linear. That's the goal. So what, let's see, what, what, what do we mean by, like, uh, by getting this, um, this thing? Like, what do we mean by getting a separator near x? Okay. What I mean is that I want to solve something called local vertex connectivity which means that given this node x, given the set node x, I want to find a set containing x that has small volume and it has cut size less than k. So the, 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 the formal thing is here. I want to have some local subroutine that given a set node, and let's call it, it's actually new, it's a Greek letter, letter but let's call it V. Uh, I have the volume parameter and K, okay? Then I want to either like say that, okay, basically the intuition is, I want to either say that, okay, the cut, the, the cut of small volume and small size, whether they exist or not. So either declare that there is no set containing x such that the cut size, the neighbor of it, is less than k, and the volume is smaller than v. I just declare that that, that thing doesn't exist. I'll find one. Um, so when I return, I will return a cut, like an L containing x such that the cut size is less than k. And the volume of this guy actually might not be exactly less than mu, uh, less than v, but I don't care actually. Yeah. So that's the problem. That's what I want to do. And I will show you the, in the last part of this how to do this in v k square time. So not even depend on n. So is this, this is clear? Like I, I, we will need to, to get, you need to understand the statement of, of this subroutine. Question about the statement? Okay. So now you see, if you have this subroutine, then you can plug it into the framework. How? Huh? And by the way, I, I will need that new shouldn't be too big. Like V shouldn't be too big. But that's, that's just technical thing. Let's forget it. Um, um, so suppose that I have that subroutine, right? What I can do is that I will just say that, okay, for every sample H, E, I look at the endpoint of E, call it X, I just run the local subroutine from x, such that the, the, the volume parameter is to the guy, and, um, and the cut size is k. And, you, and we know that just from this algorithm, you will find a cut, right? Because we say that we know that with high, with high probability, one of the sample must be inside L like this, and let's say that x is the one that is inside L. When you run local algorithm from x, there's no way that this algorithm can declare that there's no cut 
of small volume and small size because it is the one. So it will, it will return you a cut of size less than k. Yeah. Going back to the runtime of this on the last slide, um, is it V as large as M over K? Like no, v, v here is just going to be, we're going to set it to the, 2 to the I. But then isn't 2 to the I as large as M over K? Can be, can be. So doesn't the runtime again become O of M K? So. You replace like V with M over K. Good, good. So, I, right now I assume that I know what is the volume of L. Okay which is to the die. And you can fix this easily, actually. Okay. How to, how, like, we, can, we don't know what is the, okay. Let's say that, let's agree on this. Suppose that you know what's the volume of L, something like two to the die. Yeah. Then you can see that the running time here is just, just gonna be number, number of sample yeah. times two to the i k square, and that's just m k square. Okay, now you will just ask, okay, okay, we don't know to the die. Yeah. How do we deal with this? So, but before that, question about this. Suppose we know to the die, why do we get mk square? Okay, this is good, right? So now, let's see. So the algorithm would be, like the total algorithm would be just first sample k pairs of edges, get e and f, and run max flow between e and f. This is to handle the balance case. That's the mk square time. And now, comes to Aditya uh, question. Okay, we don't know to the i. How many choice of i are there? They are just locked in, many choice. So what I, because you see like, in the analysis here, I don't need the precise uh, volume. Uh, so what I do is just, we just have lock a level of i and try them all. So you know that the volume of L must be two to the I for some of this I. So you can just try them all. And for each I, just run, just sample this, came over to the I thing and run local algorithm. The running time is gonna be this thing, which is mk square again. So the total time is mk squared times some log factors. And if you don't find any cut, just now declare. With, you have high probability confidence that the graph is k-connected. So besides this step, now you should be convinced that now we are done, except this local thing. Okay, so now I need to tell you how to do it, the local thing. So let's see, like uh, this is a goal, right? Like uh, given a seed node a new parameter, uh, V parameter and K, uh, you either declare that the card containing X with small size and small volume doesn't exist, or return a card containing x such that the card size is small. Okay, so it turns out that like first I basically show this thing. We showed it. And this is why like I we get something that break the n squared runtime in the beginning, uh, but not linear. And then um, at the end we, we get this thing. Like, this is kind of more complicated based on flow algorithm, actually. 
kind of use the flow algorithm that we learned in class to make it work in local setting. And um, this is used, this one is used in different contexts. And uh, it turns out that the fastest one is the simplest one. Um, yeah, so I will tell you about this one. Okay, so how do you solve it? Well, the first idea is just reduce the problem to to each case. Similar to like when we try to solve MacFlow, like try to find what has been cut between S and T, you reduce the problem to G prime and you compute H cut. We do the same thing here. So you have this problem. I'm just gonna reduce it to a really similar problem, which is now local directed edge connectivity. And so the difference is just like just here. Where I mean that delta L of L is just like the cut, the number of edges going out of L. So I count the number of edges going out. This is like um, this is a cut my cut size in in this in this setting. The number of edges going out, and the volume is just the same thing. But now I just count total degree in and out. Okay. So how do we reduce the problem from like? from vertex to directed edge one. Just the same, the same kind of reduction. I mean, I would not go through this like in details, but just split like before, right? uh, for each node, just split it into you in and you out and connect between an edge. Just connect you out to V in, if there is an edge from, from U to V. And here, the graph is that under that, so an edge from U to V is like an, it's just connection between U and V. So I would connect from V out to U in as well. And let's say that I, I don't split the seed node, but you, can, you, could, you could split it too. It doesn't matter too much. So the same G prime reduction. And uh, if you look at it in picture, um, you, like it's just formally it's just the same thing and you can see that okay now vertex cut let's say you have vertex cut l of size 2 here will kind of the cross corresponding set here would be like just all the guys that you have split just this pair this pair this pair and um, if you cut this thing Right. You would get like a vertex, like no, edge cut of size two. So any vertex cut in original graph would be an edge cut of the same size. There are direct correspondence. So the size of the vertex cut correspond to this edge cut. The cut size is preserved exactly. How about the volume? It's kind of the same too. Like the volume just preserve up to a constant factor because you just split uh, thing, like kind of double the volume. So now, let's say now I'm I'm just gonna focus on this problem. You have a uh, you have x, v, and k. You wanna find a card such that the cut size less than k, the number of edges going out of it less than k, volume less than, it, less than new. Say that it doesn't exist or find a guy that has cut size less than k. So uh, let's try to look at the um, simple case. It's the simplest case of this problem. Suppose that the graph is simple in the sense that you suppose that there exists L. 
such that it has small volume, less than nu, less than v. And there's only one edge going out and no edge going in into it. Okay. And your goal is to, to return a cut of size at most one. Um, how do we solve this? Ideas. Any suggestion? Maxflow. Well, Maxflow, like now you want to run in like in sublinear time, right? So a BFS and then uh, no never mind I, I don't know if this works but yeah just try to say something okay, yeah my initial idea was like if you do a BFS then eventually like BFS like you spread out on each layer right but then if there's some like bottleneck then eventually the BFS will converge on a layer and then there'll be like one layer of the BFS that only has one node, but I don't know if that works mm. here because you don't like know when you'll get there. Yeah, yeah not clear to me too. Maybe BFS, but one if we know that this is true, one vertex should have degree one from the BFS. Mm. Maybe because that there can be many vertex with degree one, I think. Oh, yeah. So let's let's see this. Okay. Just suppose that I just do something like this. Suppose that I do doesn't matter too much that I do DFS or BFS, but I just do some graph traversal. Let's say DFS, starting from the seed. But let's say that I explore strictly modern V edges. I explore. Exactly, let's say v plus one edges. Then I know that I must go out of of the set v of the set L. Just because the volume here is smaller than v, right? Like I I might actually go like suppose that. Um, suppose that there is even this edge, right? I might just go here and might actually go in the wrong direction. But so far, the, the edges, all the edges that I have explored is still less than V. So what, I, what the DFS would do is just backtrack and go out. So the moment that you explore more than V, you must go out. And let's say that I, I stop at the node Z. And now, suppose I do something like this. Just reverse the path from X to V, X, X to Z. By reverse, I mean I flip the direction of every edge along the path. So like, when do when you do DFS three when you do DFS like you you have like a, a tree right like a, so this is just a a tree path from from X to Z I just flip the edges along this path now what would happen if I run um, like so now that once this is flipped now now the cut size is zero. If I run DFS again, now there's no way that I can go out of L. Because 
now the card size becomes zero. Like you must cut stuck here. And you just return what? Return the, the, the thing that you got stuck. So this would, this is a cut of size zero, and it must correspond to a cut of size one in the original graph, because the cut size just reduced by one. Yeah. So you, you see this simple case. Question? So why would we want to go out of L? Like, why I must go out of L? Yeah. Because like the volume, like the number of edges here is just less than V. Right. And uh, so if I have explore more than, more than V edges, it must be from outside. And I assume that there is no edge going in. So I cannot come back. So once I go out, I'm, I'm out forever. Right? But you see, like this, this the fact that I, I can get something outside and flip the path, I really assume that like there is no edge going in. So if there is an edge that actually go into to L, this idea wouldn't work because even if I, let's say that, like even if I, because um, the problem is that DFS might actually end up inside L now. Like, even if I, if I explore a lot of edges, much more than V edges, like this, going out, it might be like you might be unlucky and, and just go, go come, come inside L. And once I do the path reversion, now like um, this is flip, but this is flip too. And you will not get stuck in L. And like you don't, you don't like, uh, it doesn't review the set L after you do DFS again. But you see like, okay, there is, a problem, like if you explore a lot and somehow you got unlucky and come back, that's bad. But the goal would be like try somehow to go outside of L and kind of reverse the path from, from something outside L. How do we do this? How do we kind of make sure that we got some endpoint outside L. Or maybe you don't need to be so sure that you got something outside L. But, so you have explored a lot. How do you get some guy outside L? Sample. Yeah, exactly. A sample. You have, so let's say I, I have ex, like just sampling one explore edge, right? Let's say the explore edge is just the edge that you have, that, that your search DFS have read. Like, let's say this is like some big part, the part that, so now if you just sample, you know that like this thing is small thing. This thing is big thing. If you sample, you will get something outside with quite high probability. So you sample, let's say this is the edge that you have to explore. It should be outside. Okay, just sample an edge. Let's say this is an edge that you sample, call it Y and Y prime and Y. Because most edges explore are outside, Y should be outside L. And now if you reverse the path from Y to X, from X to Y, now you're good. You will reduce the reduce the cut size. And if you do DFS again, you're done. So this is a key idea, which is actually so simple. Uh, okay, now let me describe the whole algorithm. 
the algorithm is to repeat k times. And you grow the fs3, t, from x. And let's say I explore a lot of edges, but actually not too much. More than v, but it's just going to be kv. Okay. So I just explore. And actually, when I try to explore, I might actually got stuck. That is, there is just no edge going out uh, from, from some, some cut. Like in this case, like this case, I got stuck. If I got stuck, I, what I would do, I just return the cut. I said this is a cut that I, that I got stuck, I just return it. You, you, you know what I mean by got stuck, right? It's just DFS cannot explore more because there is no edge going out of, of the cut. And now, let me skip this. And now, but if you don't get stuck, I will just sample one edge that I have explored, call it y prime y, and reverse this path from x to y, reverse the path from x to y, and get this thing. And then repeat for k times. And if I never got stuck, if I never get stuck and then among this iteration, I just terminate and say that there's no cut that I wanna that I wanna see. I wanna find. So that's the algorithm. Okay. So let's analyze it, right? Um, first running time. So you see this is running time is easy, yeah. Um, you re repeat k times, and each time I really just basically the time is just explore kv edges, do it, doing the DFS, and I don't need to do DFS like uh, for like a long time. It's just stop whenever I have explore kv edges. So the total time is just b k square. So that's clear. What's not clear about is a uh, is a correctness. So there are two things to show. First, I want to say that whenever I return something, that thing must be off, like must have size, must have cut size less than k. Another thing that I need to show is that, um, so basically, when I declare that there's no cut, then it shouldn't. There shouldn't be. There shouldn't be a cut. Basically, in other words, if there is a cut, L of size less than k and volume less than v, then the algorithm should have returned something with some probability. This is a probability one over ten, but there is no problem here, right? Because you can boost this prob probability just by repeating several times, log n times. So you see that it's enough to just prove these two things. So now let's, let's prove it one by one. Okay, the running time is easy. And uh, how about this one? Um, when I return some set L prime, that set L prime should have size, cut size less than k in original graph, not, not in the graph after you reverse the path. I mean, the cut size must be less than k in original graph. And note that whenever I return a set L prime, there has been less than k path re reversion so far because there are just k iteration. And when I return L prime, I didn't do the last reversion. So there are less than k uh, reversion so far. So let's probe this. So the lemma is this. Suppose I fix any set L prime in x uh, that contains x, right? 
and let's say I reverse the path from x to y. So that's, yeah, L prime is just any set containing x. And let's, let's say I reverse the path from x to y. There are two cases to consider. Either y is inside L prime or not. If y is in outside L prime, then the path can look like this. Can go in and out. But once you reverse it, then the the cut size of L prime will be less than one, like decreased by one exactly. Because the number of times that you go out is strictly one more than the time that you go in. Right? If you go out, like if you go in nine times, you must go out ten times. How about the case when, when y is inside L prime? Then the number of times that you go in and out must be the same. So the, the, the cut size stays the same. And it means what? It means that if at the end the cut size of L prime is zero, that's why you got stuck, right? And there were less than k path reversion before. Then it means that or originally the cut size of L prime must be less than k. I mean, right? Like each time it can reduce by only one. Each iteration the cut size can reduce by only one. At the end it is zero, and there were less than k iteration. So in the beginning, the size must be less than k. Make sense? So now you see that the cut that we return will have size less than k. Okay. So next is the completeness. So what I want to say is like, if there exists a cut of small size and volume, the algorithm should have should return some some cut, some cut L prime. So why is that? So suppose that this it exists, the cut L of small volume and size exists. Then I claim that um, when you when you sample the the edge, when you explore it, what you know is that y should be outside L with high with good probability, like because it's inside L with probability something like nu, the volume of L over k nu k k v. Because you have explored KV edges, but you sample, but the, the edges inside L is just V. So this is the probability that Y is inside L. So the probability that Y is not inside L is this thing, which is something like 1 over K, 1 minus 1 over K. So with quite good probability, you get something outside L. And once you flip the path, you know that the cut size must decrease. Okay. So you know that, okay, for each iteration, with good probability, you decrease the cut, the cut size of L. In, in the beginning, the cut size of L is less than K. So, so if you basically decrease the cut size at each iteration, then at some point, the last iteration, you must, you must return something because the cut size becomes zero. So that's exactly what I want to say. In the beginning, this, this guy has size at most k minus one. And I want to, um, I want to, um, like, I, I want to claim that this guy will reduce, will keep reducing its size at every iteration and become zero. And the probability that that thing happened is just 1 minus 1 over k to the k. 
Like this is just a, the, it, the probability that it reduces size. I want it to happen k minus one times, right? So this this is probability that it becomes zero. The size of L becomes zero. What is this? This is just something like e, like one over e, right? Um, you should you should have like by now you should like be comfortable with this. Like this is just um, e to the minus one over k to the k minus one. So this is something like one over e. So it's constant. So it means what? It means that with this probability, like at least one over ten, the the size of L keep reducing and become zero. And so the last iteration k, you must got stuck, because there is some cut that that have size, that has size like, that have size zero now. So you must go, get stuck. And you will you you must return some cut. You must return some cut with probability one over ten. Question. Yeah, so then is this probably like boosted by just repeating this local algorithm a bunch of times for each? Yeah, yeah. Just repeat it a little bit to, to, to boost the probability. Um, so we get this thing. Um, question? Looks like from the atmosphere, like it's like I lost you somehow, or uh, am I? <laughs> yeah. Could you elaborate on why, if we got stuck, we found the cut again? Yeah. So, I mean, when you got stuck, right? Yeah. Um, it really just. What does it mean for DFS to got stuck? It means that you have do some search, right? And there is some set of nodes such that every edge of this set only go into into it. And I just gonna return, like I just gonna say that this this is a cut, the, the 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 nodes that I have explored and I cannot go out. This is the thing that I return. Uh -huh. And if that's less than K V, then your cut is less than k. So the volume here is going to be at most kv, you agree? Uh, but like, I don't care much about the volume of the set here. I care about the, the size of the cut. This is L prime. Uh -huh. I, 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 care, I only care that the cut size of L prime less than k. Why does that imply that the cut size is less than k? So the reason is that here, right? Um, I know that when I return L prime, when I return L prime, at that moment, after I have reversed a bunch of paths, at that moment, there is no edges going out of L prime. This is just um, when, when we got stuck. We, we got stuck only. This is kind of the definition of how we get get stuck, oh. right? You you have no edge to go out, mm -hmm. so the size is now zero. And I want to say that if the size at that time become like the cut size is zero, or originally before I reverse any part, the cut size must be less than k. And the reason is just that for every time that I reverse a path, the cut size can decrease just by one. Okay. Yeah. This is also because you only do k iterations. Exactly. So there are strictly less than k iterations. Yeah. 
each iteration, you, you reduce it by one at most. So originally, it must have size less than k. Okay. OK, good. So basically, with this, um, like with all these three steps, basically, we get this algorithm, the local version of edge cut. If once we solve this thing, we get the vertex version by reduction. And once we have this, you just plug it into the framework. And that gives you mk square time algorithm. So let me conclude. So basically, the state of the R was M mn, um, randomized, and this is deterministic, even worse. And what we get is k square m. And you see, um, it's fast when k is small. Um, and this is kind of simple, teachable. I hope you understand it up to some extent. Um, and it breaks the long-standing bound. And let me tell you about state of the, of the art a bit. Um, so this is fast when k is small, linear. And basically, more recently, we, we actually get it linear um, for any k. It's kind of solved now. And, but this is randomized. Uh, I also get like a, something deterministic too, but again, it only works when k is constant. Um, okay, and okay. So the, I think the point again, I hope you get this, is that um, if you solve something locally and use randomization in a simple way, you can actually get something nice. And the motivation for local algorithm is actually like, it's just go beyond this, this, this application. You can imagine that you have like a large graph and you want to find some cluster and you don't have even the time to read the whole graph. Like you, you, you want to find, like you have a seed node X and um, you find, want to find some cluster here, yeah. C such that without reading the whole graph. And you can imagine that you want to find a cut that is sparse or have a lot of edges and so on. And today we just look at one specific problem. But there are more things in this direction that is very interesting. And there are some open problem, which is, so it's still completely pro open when, when the vertex has weight, actually. And uh, can you get deterministic algorithm? And maybe like the word, like the, the local algorithm that I showed today takes like VK square time. Can you get VK? Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's it. And next time we talk about multiplicity weight update, which is about, again, how to deal with the future uh, without knowing the future. Yeah, see you next time.